that was one of the that's one of the things that she's involved in. Yes, it's a really she, cool. Very thing. involved in. Yeah, Rock and she's on camp. the board. Yeah, I believe so. Yeah, uh, I saw you at a social event, the Phoenix Film Collective screening of Let the Right One In. Yeah, that was a nice. I think they were sold out. It looked like every chair it was, was pretty close. Yeah. yeah, I know Chris was worried about it because it was not selling super quickly, oh. and then people just bought within the last two days. Yeah, and yeah. Well, I think I it mean, all filled out. Yeah, sometimes I, I would wonder. like to think it's all because of my of my ad campaigns. On all my of your social media social posts media. and yeah. <laughs> it's all me. You're welcome, Chris. <laughs> you drove the traffic. <laughs> um, I wonder how if how um, good of a predictor those online sales ahead of time can be. I I don't know because it's a Friday night yeah. event, so some people wait until Friday to make their Friday night plans. Well, and I think also. It's when it's first Friday and people are deciding whether or not they want to, what oh, they want to do. You know. For me, that's a no brainer. I'm yeah. not going to Roosevelt Row for first Friday. <laughs> I, I've done it a few times recently because of poetry events, oh, right. but um, usually, usually I won't go down there unless it's for very specific reasons. Yeah, it's just I can't. Do I want to try to park or. Yeah, I, I will do one of two things. If I know I can't get down there relatively early, I will just park at third and camelback and mm-hmm. take the light rail down um well, that's smart and otherwise i'll just i'll you know, not even try i'll park a few streets over and then just walk down to roosevelt because yeah it's the crowds you know. thing yeah um, for me it's the crowd i don't want to deal with it yeah um i saw a lot of movies this weekend because i saw let the right one in which is one of my favorites by the way i've got in that's a whole conversation with yeah. people about which DVDs do you own? And I don't own that many anymore. Just mm-hmm. actually, I counted twenty, and that's one of my twenty. Oh, because I I love that movie. Um, and then I watched this climbing movie on Netflix, and then we went and saw Us on Sunday. Oh, uh, the new um, Peel. Yeah, Keenan Peel movie. Yeah. Um. Well, is that his first name, or do no. I always get them mixed up? It, well, you're putting the comedy duo together. Yeah, it's Keenan Peel. But um, what's his first name? It's I thought it's Jordan Peel. Jordan. Yeah. Okay. It rhymes. <laughs> no. 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 <laughs> kind of. Well, because it's it's um uh I forget the other guy's name altogether, but it's Key and yeah. Peel. So uh, I I took a guess. <laughs> I was wrong. Um, I didn't like it as well as I liked Get Out. Yeah. Yeah. I, I need to see it. I'm reserving opinion until I see it, Okay, obviously. but um, This is all I want to tell you. I think it's a little too long. There's a yeah. lot of moments that are drawn out. Too much. I'm like, I get it. You're trying to build suspense, but I'm just waiting. Well, but we've talked before about For your difficulty sitting through an entire film. Yeah. And again, this one was kind of long. It was over two hours. Mm-hmm. Um, I made it cause I was with friends, so I wasn't going to get up and leave. And there was the promise of a beer afterwards. Uh, there you go. So that was worth the investment, but yeah, I feel a lot of movies should be edited down more. So how are you going to do with the three plus hour Avenger movie? <laughs> I'm going to have to, because the last one left off mm-hmm. in such a dramatic way. I have to see what happens. Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> <laughs> did you did you go see Captain Marvel? No, but I want to. Did you? Uh, yeah, I saw it. It was it it's good. one of the many things I've started doing by myself. Um so uh, Dude, I've been just, doing that know. since I was 18. <laughs> I I well, I it's just I've been in a relationship pretty steadily for 17 years, I figured out. Even with, when with I was very, in steady relationships, I go to movies by myself. I, yeah. See, well, I always think that that's the benefit of being with somebody is that you go do things together. But yeah. I've apparently been <laughs> mistaken on a few occasions as to, <laughs> well, I mean, as to that. Yeah, that's true. It is fun to do things with your partner. But I was, uh, I'm, I'm Aquarius. Apparently, we're very independent. Mm. I do a lot of things by myself. Yeah. A lot of things. I get, I don't know. <laughs> I, I, I think part of it because I don't, I, I'm just, I'm not going to get into it here. Oh. It was very awkward for me at like at Phoenix Film Collective, even though I have, I had friends there and new people there. It was odd for, for me to, oh, well, to be there. Yes. This is a period of transition. Yeah. That's, um, 
Yeah, like we took a hiatus from this podcast, but in that short time, mm-hmm. a lot of things have changed. That's true. In life. Oh, yeah. This is, well, this will probably be the last edition of this that we record in this space. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, goodbye to the office here. <laughs> yeah. Let's. Aw. Should we pour some booze out? Like, <laughs> why waste <it's>... booze? Um, <laughs> uh, but yeah, so it's yeah, moving on. I don't know. It's a new period. Yep. In life. Yeah. I'm feeling hopeful about things lately. I've had a lot of changes this year too. I am hoping that I'll feel hopeful about things. Yeah. Um, I'm looking forward to. Hashtag it gets better. Oh wait, wrong campaign. Is... <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It's I, I'm kind of looking to, forward to having my own space again, and hey. I'm kind of looking for forward to uh, at least having the the breathing room. This has been kind of you know the situation between breaking up and then moving is is tense. So. Yeah. I picture you in your new loft and you're doing the thing like the guy in High Fidelity where you dump all your records on the floor and go through all of them and sort them in a new way. Autobiographical? Yeah, autobiographical sorting. I don't know if I have the if I, if I have the energy for that. <laughs> it's such an undertaking. I mean, and also my like Again, OCD. Call a few days. I'm a, like my OCD. It would just be like I can't have these on the floor. It's killing me. Yeah, <laughs> you know? I know that scene bothers me for yeah. that reason. Well, you're they're all stacked. With a guy, his friend comes in his and friend, he's yeah. yelling at him. He's, he's he like, can't stack you know, them. You're like, not they're supposed to stack get them like that. Yeah, uh. exactly. <laughs> that was I. I went to IKEA last week. It's by record. Also, no, it's also the first time I've I've gone to IKEA by myself. Oh whoa! Yeah, I've never. Because I've never been interested in... Who would want in... to go there by themselves? <laughs> Apparently I did. I, I initially, well, you need furniture, so... I, initially, I, I had, like, ordered a a bookshelf to for pickup. Okay. Like, I need a bookshelf. Uh, I, but also, <laughs> I got... Quit chiming in. Huh? Yeah. Um, Dad jokes. I got... Uh, what was it? Um... Well, I got concerned about like the amount of space that I have because it's a pretty it's a pretty small space. I mean, I took it knowing that because I liked the location and I liked the interior of it and and all of that. So I I figured I could deal with the small space. And yeah. now I'm I'm like I have a lot of stuff. It does. I, you don't think about having a lot of stuff, or at least I didn't until I started boxing it up. Yeah, um, you got a I, lot of stuff. All too. I've all I've boxed <laughs> up so far is my books, yeah. and that's almost like the entire living room right now is is boxes of books. And, and I bet that took you a whole day. It took me a long time. Yeah, yeah. I, I haven't touched the two thousand plus. I guess it's it's yeah, it's like twenty eight hundred CDs. And I, I think I have like three or four hundred records. So it's um, and hundreds of DVDs and Blu-ray as well. None of that's in boxes yet. I've packed up everything in this desk. This desk is not coming with me. Okay. Um, because it's it's just too it's big. Huge. And yeah. heavy. Looking. And heavy exactly. So that was that was the whole impetus for them. Like, okay, I need a place immediately to set up because I've just got recording commitments and everything. So, like. I have to go and walk around for a minute and see if I see anything. So I picked up a new chair, a new desk, and I, I think I've been, I was in and out of there faster than I've ever been before because I just walked through and knew what. That's good. I find that place to be labyrinthine and I get lost mm-hmm. every time. Um, here's how I do moving into a new place. Uh, well, first I left everything. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I left everything. everything. I took yeah. my clothes and my cat and, uh, same, right? You're yeah, going to do that. Pretty close. So then uh, I came to the new apartment, and mine's actually pretty spacious, but it was empty. Slept on the floor the first two days, and then got a bottle of red wine and my laptop and started ordering <laughs> furniture from Home Depot. <laughs> That's how I gotcha. addressed that issue. But then it was kind of fun because for the first two weeks in my new place, I was just on the floor of the like living camping. room assembling furniture every night after yeah. work. 
there's there's something about I you know for all of my stuff and all the stuff that I I, I love honestly obviously because I hang on to it and keep adding to it. Uh, but I my favorite thing has always been a place before I put anything in it. It's like so when I fresh see like an new. empty apartment. I really enjoyed yeah. that for the first few weeks. No yeah. furniture. Um, I borrowed a couple chairs from the management company. I think they forgot about it because I still have them. There. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, I just uh, I really only took my favorite books and then some books that I hadn't read yet. I might have stolen some books from my ex. Mm. Was, eh, he wasn't going to read them again. That's I'm yeah. erring on the side of I don't know. Well, thankfully we didn't. The only things that we mixed were our films and whatnot and we spent an evening separating those already so that was done and all of my books and music were separate so well that makes it easier yeah still not easy i'm finally reading the handmaid's tale oh yeah the first two seasons were so good Mm -hmm. um and i wanted to see how much of the book is in the show and how much it diverges I actually thought I had read this Mm -hmm. like in high school because I love Margaret Atwood. Mm -hmm. Um, And I've read like The Blind Assassin and uh, what's that one? Cats, not Cat's Cradle, Cat's Eye. I always always get those two mixed up. Is Cat's Cradle a Vonnegut book? Yeah. Yeah. It's a great Vonnegut book. Yeah. I get those titles mixed up. But um, Handmaid's Tale is really interesting because the way the book is written, it's like you're hearing Ofra. But she's hmm. writing in secret. I didn't realize this. Like, that's how the book is formatted. It's like, wherever she could find a writing instrument or a stitch of paper to, like, hide away, mm-hmm. she's keeping this log, this diary of the things that are happening to them. Mm. And then uh, that makes sense because in the show, there's this whole thing with, like, a packet of letters. Mm-hmm. She becomes um, sort of responsible for this packet of letters, and she starts to go through them, and she realizes it's all these various women that have been trapped in their system mm. and it was them like desperately trying to leave a note or leave some tale of what they lived through and survived so that i know i'm not this is not a spoiler because i don't know what happens to that packet mm-hmm. something's going to happen in the show um but anyway I, it didn't occur to me that that's how her whole story is compiled in the first place it's like Gotcha. Wherever Alfred can step away from what she's living and secretly hide it, because mm-hmm. in this new society, um, what is it called? It starts with the G. Um, Gideon, not Gideon. Why am I spacing? Anyway, they can't. Women are not supposed to read or write. Gotcha. So you would be penalized if you were caught. You know. Plus, they would read it and be like, "Oh, <laughs> she doesn't agree with all of our." weird beliefs huh that's a little bit of big brother to it definitely and uh margaret atwood wrote a new prologue for the book since the show Mm. has been in series and that's very interesting because she addresses these questions people oh you know like is it an anti-christian or Mm anti-religion book and her answer is kind of well no but you could interpret it (laughs) that way because these things can become extremist right right? absolutely uh, is yeah, it like can. a they feminist have. Yeah. manifesto? And she's sort of like, well, no, but we still need feminism. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and again, you could interpret it that way. <laughs> <laughs> um, there's a lot, a lot of themes in the stories that have to deal with who really has control over women's bodies. Mm. And I think that's interesting, especially lately, because so much has been talked about with birth control like should yeah. health care be universal and should it cover things like abortion and well the that? answers to both of those are yes <laughs> well i agree also but <laughs> i yeah I mean, and i don't think it's just a women's issue i think it's no, an everybody issue it's universal health care yeah <laughs> i mean well, also the right or not to have a child and yeah well i mean or not you know is, is there, although there are reports that at least in the united states birth rates are on the decline I, that doesn't bother me so much you know they talk about us having uh a, like a a manpower shortage of that manpower in the oh, universal like in such Japan? But, um yeah. where you end up with a yeah we have an aging, aging population, population we're heading into that 
um, they're actually, I guess, uh, the Midwest is is having a, a wow, severe problem decline. with that. Yeah, interesting. And um, so they're actually looking to to create bills. 